In this training aid, we will look at how to take a magnetic bearing. A bearing is the direction from one position to another. You can measure the bearing on a map or, if you can see your objective, directly on the ground. First, we will look at how to get a magnetic bearing from a map. Place your compass on the map with the long edge along the desired line of travel, making sure that the direction of travel line points in the direction of travel intended. Ignoring the needle, turn the capsule so that the declination arrow points up the map to grid north and the orientating lines are parallel with the eastings. Read the bearing at the index line. This is your grid bearing. Change the grid bearing into a magnetic bearing by applying the GMA. The compass is now set on the magnetic bearing for use on the ground. Now we will look at how to take a magnetic bearing to a ground feature. Keeping the compass away from metal objects, such as your weapon, that could affect the reading. Hold the magnetic compass flat in your hand so that the needle can turn freely. Point the direction of the travel line at your desired feature, in this case a church. Now turn the capsule to align the pointed end of the declination arrow with the north end of a magnetic needle. The figure at the index line is a magnetic bearing from your position to your feature, in this case 4,900. In this training aid, we will look at how to convert a bearing into a back bearing. Having taken a bearing to a known position, you may need to convert that bearing back to your unknown position. This is called a back bearing. You do this by following this simple rule. If the original bearing is less than 3,200 mils, then add 3,200 to obtain the back bearing. Similarly, if the original bearing is 3,200 mils or more, then subtract 3,200. Here is an example. The bearing from your location to the church is 4,900 mils. As this is more than 3,200, we subtract 3,200, which gives you a back bearing of 1,700 mils. In this training aid, we will look at plotting a grid bearing using a protractor and a lightweight compass. You will often be required to plot a bearing accurately onto a map. For example, whilst carrying out a resection, confirming a route of march or locating an enemy position. Firstly, let us look at plotting a grid bearing using a protractor. Ensuring that the map is on a flat surface Place the protractor onto the map with the centre point over the position that you are plotting the bearing from. Make sure the baseline of the protractor is parallel with the eastings. The arc of the protractor will face either to the right if the bearing is less than 3200 mils or to the left if a bearing is greater than 3,200 mils. With a protractor in the correct position, you can now pinpoint the bearing to be plotted and mark the map accordingly. Now, remove a protractor and draw a straight line from your position through this point and beyond. Your bearing is now plotted on the map for use
Let us look at an example. You have been informed that an enemy position has been located in a wood block 8.5 kilometers from your current position at a bearing of 1,300 mils and you have been asked to identify this wood block on your map. Firstly, place your protractor correctly over your position. Pinpoint 1,300 mils on the protractor and mark the map accordingly. Remove the protractor and draw a line from your position through this mark. Now, by using the map scale, measure 8.5 kilometers from your position along this line. You have now identified the enemy position within this woodblock. Let's look at plotting a grid bearing using a lightweight compass. First, set the grid bearing you have been given on the compass, for example, 2000 mils. Place one of the long edges of the compass on your position. Ignoring the compass needle, rotate the whole compass until the declination arrow is pointing up the map to grid north, and the orientating lines are parallel with the eastings. Draw a line from your position along the compass edge towards the direction of travel arrow. You may need to continue the line further if required. You have now plotted a grid bearing using a lightweight compass.